Warm greetings from TNV Academy. Today we are going to discuss about ISO 31000 risk management system. However, before we move forward, let me tell you what are the key deliverables and takeaways of this session. In this session, you will be able to understand about history of ISO 31000, how it came into picture and when it was first drafted, concept of ISO 31000, benefits of ISO 31000, principles of risk management, framework of ISO 31000 and how to manage risks as per ISO 31000. So let's start our discussion with the history of ISO 31000. ISO 31000 standard is a family of standards relating to risk management codified by the International Organization for Standardization. ISO 31000 was published as a standard on 13th November 2009, which provided the guidelines for implementation of risk management. A revised and harmonized Guide 73 was also published at the same time along with the standard. ISO began the process of revising the standard on May 13, 2015. As a result, a draft of this international standard, which was open for public comment, was published on February 17, 2017. The last update to ISO 31000 was done in early 2018. The update is different from its previous version in the way that ISO 31000-2018 provides more strategic guidance than ISO 31000-2009 and places more emphasis on both the involvement of senior management and the integration of risk management into the organization. Now let us discuss about what is ISO 31000. In a world where standards are usually written in documents that run hundreds of pages, the 16 pages of ISO 31000-2018 constitute a brief and concise guide to help organizations improve the way they manage risks. The ISO 31000 document, which can be read in about one hour, consists of four main sections. The first section tells about the definitions of key terms such as risk, risk management, stakeholders, risk sources, events, consequences, probability and control. The second section tells about the principles of risk management. In other words, we can say that risk management is integrated executed using a structured, comprehensive, customized, inclusive and dynamic approach based on the best information available on human and cultural factors and continually improved. The third section tells about the framework to ensure that risk management is properly implemented and integrated, carefully designed, regularly reviewed and continuously adapted and improved. The fourth and final section is on the risk management process, including the traditional elements of risk identification, analysis, assessment and handling of risks reinforced by monitoring and reviewing as well as the element of communication and consulting. The ISO 31000 risk management framework is an international standard that provides businesses with guidelines and principles for risk management. ISO 31000 provides a set of principles, guidelines for the design, implementation of a risk management framework and recommendations for the application of a risk management process. The risk management process as described in ISO 31000 can be applied to any activity including decision making at all levels. ISO 31000 defines an approach towards risk management to enable all strategic management and operational tasks of an organization throughout projects, functions and processes to be aligned to a common set of risk management objectives. ISO 31000 is designed to be used in organizations of any size, its concepts work equally well in the public and the private sector, in large or small businesses and in non-profit organizations as well. Let us now take up the benefits of ISO 31000 for discussion. There are several benefits associated with adopting the ISO 31000 standard. Few of them are the first one, proven effectiveness. It means because ISO 31000 is an internationally recognized standard, it is used by countless organizations. This means that ISO 31000 has been thoroughly vetted and proved to be effective. The second benefit is reduced legal exposure. It means that by identifying key drivers, organizations may be able to reduce their legal exposure and decrease the risks posed by litigation. The third point is address risks in a standardized method. When are properly implemented, ISO 31000 can act as a template that will help organizations identify key drivers of risk. 
it establishes risk criteria and risk treatments in a standardized way. The fourth point is create a culture of risk mitigation. By incorporating risk mitigation into nearly all business processes within an organization, employees will become used to the idea of identifying and potentially mitigating risks. The fifth benefit is increase the organization's profitability. When an organization mitigates unnecessary risks, it also reduces the potential for financial damage stemming from events tied to that particular risk. The sixth benefit is utilize what is already in place. It means ISO 31000 is just one of many ISO standards. The various standards are designed to work together, which means that organizations may be able to incorporate the work that they have already done into their ISO 31000 strategy. The seventh benefit is it can drive an organization to be more preemptive. It means a good ISO 31000 implementation can help an organization shift from being reactive to taking a more proactive approach at risk mitigation. The eighth benefit is it may help the organization to more easily acquire funding. It means banks and investors tend to be risk averse. If an investor is convinced that an organization is serious about identifying and mitigating risks, they may be more likely to approve an investment. Now, as we have discussed the benefits of ISO 31000, let us now enlighten ourselves about the principles of risk management. So basically, there are 11 risk management principles which I have listed over here. The first one is risk management should establish and sustain value. Second one, the risk management should be an integral part of all organizational processes. Third one, risk management should be a part of decision making. Fourth one, risk management should explicitly address uncertainty. Fifth one, risk management should be systematic, structured and timely. Sixth one, risk management should be based on the best available information. The seventh principle, risk management should be tailored. Eighth principle, risk management should take human and cultural factors into account. Ninth principle, risk management should be transparent and inclusive. Tenth principle, risk management should be dynamic, iterative and responsive to change. And the final principle is risk management should facilitate continual improvement of the organization. We now move ahead and discuss about the framework of ISO 31000. The risk management framework is made up of six distinct areas. The first one is leadership. Leaders within the organization will need to take the initiative to make sure that ISO 31000 is adopted and applied in a way that aligns with the organization's culture and business objectives. The second one is integration. While it is important to integrate risk mitigation into as many organizational processes, it is important to not cause operational bottlenecks or stand in the way of core business processes being performed. The third one is design. Organizations will need to design a risk management strategy that works for the organization based on its needs. The fourth one is implementation. The implementation process integrates the organization's risk management design into business processes. Implementation is usually a formal process with stated objectives, deadlines and reporting requirements. The fifth one is evaluation. Evaluation assess the design to determine what is working and what need to be refined. The final one is improvement. Organizations should continuously look for ways to improve their ISO 31000 implementation. So now we will discuss about what is the approach of ISO 31000 standard to cater risks. ISO 31000 gives a list on how to deal with the risks. The first one is avoiding the risk by deciding not to start or continue with the activity that gives rise to the risk. The second one is accepting or increasing the risk in order to pursue an opportunity. The third one is removing the risk source. Fourth one is changing the likelihood of the risk. Fifth one is changing the consequences. Sixth one is sharing the risk with another party or parties, including contracts and risk financing. Seventh one is retaining the risk by informed decision. So these were the basic approaches taken by ISO 31000 standard, which brings the risk mitigation process into practice. Now this brings us to the end of this particular session. I sincerely thank you all for your interest and attention. In case you have any queries and questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section of the video and we will be really happy answering them. Till then, it's me signing off. Goodbye and take care.